This is a sample chapter from Fitton Books. Murder at the Applegate by R.P. Fitton. Chapter 1. Aunt May's dark eyes expanded like a tree frog, trying to scare its prey. She held the yellow kitchen phone and said the word clearly. Murder. Joan stopped midway across the spacious country kitchen. Everyone he knew in Hamilton flashed into his thoughts. Who? The chief didn't say. He just said, tell Matthias there's been a murder. Jones crossed the worn linoleum squares. He had been back in Indiana for less than 24 hours. The purpose of the trip was to get his Aunt May to move to Hamilton. He took the phone. What happened, George? Are you sitting down? No, I'm not. Who was murdered? I'm sorry, Matthias. I know how close he was to all your teams. Oh, no, not Woozy. No, Woozy is okay. George? Workmen were out at the Applegate Development, north of town. Apparently, Arnie Dewar spotted a work boot in the cement. Arnie was on the Manchester television station. If it's not too much to ask, George, who's dead? Leo Crowley. Jones fell back into one of Aunt May's kitchen chairs. He gripped the chrome frame as he shook his head. Then he stood quickly and his face became flushed. His throat tightened and he lowered his head. I just talked to him yesterday, George. He was in a great mood. This is insane. Who'd want to kill Leo? He was the most cooperative and nicest person I ever met. Well, nobody has that answer. He had no enemies. Aunt May set a fresh cup of coffee on the table and put her hand on Jones's shoulder. Joanne Crowley is a wreck. The kids are with her sister in Newtown. Jones sipped the coffee. George, I was leaving Friday, but I'll be back early. Father Gallagher is on his way over to Hamilton right now. If you could somehow come back here. I will. I'll call the airlines now. Aunt May took her pecan pie out of the large cast iron stove. Well, they haven't totally dislodged the body from the concrete. If Arnie hadn't been throwing trash in the trench, he never would have seen the boot. Apparently the mess he left was extensive and involved another truck on the development. Well, I'm sure we'll never hear the end of it. George, what's your gut feeling on this? I don't have a clue. He was going to contact LG because of some legal problem over there. That's good info. Thank you. Something was wrong. I could hear it in his voice. Jones pounded the doorframe. I want answers, George. I'll let Joanne know you're coming back. And express my condolences. I will. Who's the concrete company? PW Concrete, Prince William. They sent concrete down the chutes into the basement Friday morning. The subs might have seen something. I'll see you when I get back, George. Aunt May wiped her forehead. Leo was the one who helped you with your equipment. Yeah, and everything else. You just asked and he took care of it. It wasn't like he was getting paid. Jones's fists were still clenched. A good man has just been killed. And I'm going to find out why. My good friend is dead. Jones gripped the coffee mug and stared at the picture of his dad near the kitchen door. He walked up to the 8x10 framed color photograph. His dad, hair just beginning to gray, held up a photo of a road outside of Wabash Falls that led to a small metal bridge. Below was a card marked, Bill's Side Road. Look at that worn jacket from the good guy's softball team. He wore that up until the day he died. Okay, Dad, innocent guy with enemies is placed in concrete, gangland style. Why? Aunt May spoke in a soft voice. You just answered your own questions, Matthias. Gangland. Jones turned to her. Doesn't mean it was gangland. Aunt May walked up to her brother's picture. Okay, Bill, what do you make of it? Jones smiled. He used to run his investigations by you, didn't he? Oh, I can't say I was right all the time, but it did him good to talk it through. You should come back to New Hampshire with me, Aunt May. Well, let's not start that again. Aunt May slipped her arm around him. Sorry about Leo. I really like Leo, damn it. I know what Bill would be doing right now, said Aunt May. He'd say, enough sentimentality, we've got a murder here. Yep, he'd be on the computer finding out about the Applegate development. Be my guest, she said, making a sweeping gesture into the living room. The TV played the news channel as he walked over to her small desk with the computer that he had sent last Christmas. 
I'm glad you actually use this Aunt May. Seeing your games on an MP4 on full screen is great, although I think you get too emotional on the sidelines. Jones pushed the switch. Where did you learn about MP4s? I have my ways. That was one of Dad's expressions. No, it was your grandfather, also a cop. Chief of Wabash Falls, Matthias. The phone rang. She picked up the portable off the cradle. Yes, yes, hello, Father. Jones looked over his shoulder. Oh, no, it's sunny and beautiful here. No, no, he's right here. She handed the phone to Jones as he finished typing in the computer passwords. Jim. Matthias, this is terrible. I know all about it. You need to return to Hamilton. Dr. Bradgate just gave Joanne Crowley a sedative. I told George I'm coming back. Oh. Jim, what's the name of that development? Applegate. Where have I been? I never heard of it. You've been busy with your teams. Jones balanced the phone between his shoulder and his neck as he typed. Applegate Development, Hamilton, New Hampshire. A colorful website with an actual photo of the main road and houses under construction filled the background. The Bonner Companies, Robert Bonner, President, Bill Harwood. I never heard of these guys either. Prince William Credit Union. I have my mortgage with them. Well, I know you'll be all over this, but I would suggest that your initial call when you get home should be to Joanne Crowley. She needs all the support she can get. Yes, Father. You should have ample time. It's it being summer vacation. Yes, Father. Jones read the company history. Says the company has done most of the work in Prince William. Call me when you get back, Matthias. The whole funeral is up in the air because of this concrete issue in the medical examiner's office. Jones traced the map north of town. If I'm not mistaken, Leo's orchards were in that area. Are you listening to me, Matthias? Yes, Jim. I'll call you when I get back. Jones pushed the end button and handed the phone to Aunt May. He scanned the various model homes and street plans. Here's the sales number. Jones punched in the New Hampshire number. That's a Hamilton exchange. The mellow voice of a man sounded on the voicemail. You've reached the combined sales department of the Applegate. We're extremely sorry we cannot answer your request. Leave your name and number and we'll be sure to return your call. Jones hung up. I'm not leaving my name and number for some killer to hear. Jones was about to call Bonner Development's main number in Prince William when Aunt May shouted from the other side of the room. Don't look now, Matthias, but I think the story has made the hourly news channel. Jones spun around in the chair as the network flyover of Hamilton and the Applegate development appeared on Aunt May's wide screen. Oh, this is bizarre. Well, the murder is bizarre said Aunt May. Jones joined her in front of the screen. Tiny college town of Hamilton, New Hampshire is in shock today with the death of one of its most beloved citizens. It wasn't just the tragedy of 43-year-old Leo Crowley being murdered. It was how he was murdered below a house foundation of the Applegate development. Gray-bearded Clayton Morris stood in front of a concrete foundation pylon. His name appeared in yellow letters on the bottom of the screen with the title Medical Examiner. Dr. Morris, how long is the body been in the concrete. Well, I can only say that we'll have a full summary once the official investigation gives us clearance. Was Crowley dead before he was placed in the concrete? Sorry, I can't comment, but I will say I've never seen such a murder in all my 41 years as a forensic pathologist. Jones turned to Aunt May. I can understand Clayton not saying anything right now. Who is that? asked Aunt May. Jones's face slowly tightened as Arnie Dewar stood in a blue-striped Dewar's lumber shirt. He wore a white baseball cap with the lumber yard logo Dewar's written on a saw. Arnold Dewar's? asked Jones laughing. I've never heard Arnie call Arnold. Yeah, I was out here early dropping off some stock from my lumber yard, Dewar's Lumber, Hamilton, New Hampshire, said Arnie, raising his voice and pointing to the company name on his shirt. Oh, what a liar. George told me he was illegally dumping trash and garbage on the project so he wouldn't have to pay the landfill fees. And I see this work boot sticking out of the concrete. When did you realize there was an actual body in the concrete? Oh, I could tell by the contours. How so? I have an eagle eye. He didn't know. Jones thought he heard Bucky Driscoll somewhere near the camera. The video quickly switched to the entrance of the development. 
I know I heard Bucky Driscoll in the background. You mean that goof who keeps dialing and says he has the wrong number? Bucky's been dialing your number? He said he was in security yeah, and a few other things I'd prefer not to say. Well, what he did he say, Aunt May? He said I was a, quote, goddamn liar and he'd get a legal injunction. You never told me that. I'll kill that little rodent. Jones's face was flushed when he turned back to the TV. The reporter walked along the front of the Applegate entrance. This is an ongoing story, Peg, and we'll keep you up to date. Ben Jarvis, Hourly News Channel. Poor Leo. Why was he killed? The line rang to Bonner Development. Odd, it just keeps ringing. No menu, nothing. Well, I'm sure they don't want to talk to anyone, Matthias. Jones at the kitchen door held his suitcases. He gazed around the yellow painted walls and the long pane windows. Bonner's lawyer says wasn't very helpful. Of course not. They're in with Bonner. Very good, Aunt May. He hugged her again. I'd really like you to come back to Hamilton with me. You want me to live in Hamilton? Well, that's not a bad idea. But Matthias, I've lived here all my life. I did too. Jones picked up the suitcases. He opened the kitchen door. He gazed down the porch swing and they moved down the stairs. The huge beige Victorian reminded him of his dad. He had vague memories of his mother because she was three years old when she died. Dad never married again. His cell phone rang. He looked at May. Could be anybody. Jones pinched her cheek. Well, you're no help. Jones set down the suitcases and reached in his coat pocket for his phone. Hey. Oh, Coco. Aunt May opened her eyes wide. Listen, I heard what happened to your boy Crowley. Well, it was gruesome. Well, I'm sorry, but Bonner is bad news, and word on the street is Crowley's murder was a statement. It sure was. Are you saying the underworld was involved in this? I ain't saying nothing, but before you start sticking your nose into this, you gotta use your head. Why? You figure it out. Gallagher told me Leo's wife wants me to look into this because she's devastated. Right. Coco, do me a favor. What favor? I just did you a favor by telling you this. I need information about the developers and the subs. What did I just tell you, Jonesy? Forget it. Let Strickland take care of this. Jones stared at the phone when Coco hung up on him. What did he say, Matthias? Uncooperative. Jones lifted the suitcases, and that surprises you? They walked down the dirt walkway to his father's truck, which Aunt May still drove after his death. No, it doesn't surprise me, but he did warn me to watch myself. Aunt May pressed her lips. I think he told you what they used to tell Bill. Stay out of it.